I'm an environmental scientist and over time I've seen a lot of deforestation in my country for fuel wood. And this is not only affecting the environment, but also it affects people's health. For example, the data shows that in Tanzania around 33,000 people die prematurely each year just due to the pollution which is coming from indoor by the use of cooking with the fuel wood. My name is Rahel El Bariki. I come from Tanzania. I work with Tanzania Industrial Research and Development Organization as a research officer under the Division of Environmental Technology. Currently, I'm working on the project of biomass briquet as the alternative to wood fuel because in Tanzania, most of the people, they use wood fuel, which has an impact to the environment, including climate change. But we are blessed with a lot of biomass material, like this one is coconut shell, which can be turned to biomass briquettes and replace the use of wood fuel, which has an impact to our environment. <laughs> So this has really triggered my mind, like what can we find to solve all this problem? That's why now I'm working on biomass briquette, because biomass briquette is cheap fuel which can replace firewood. Currently, Tanzania has what we call as a guidance which leads to a clean cooking energy to ensure that by 2034, 80% of users, they have to use a clean energy in Tanzania. Data also show that women spend around six hours every day just to find uh, fuel wood for cooking and these women could spend this time going to do the economic activity like the agriculture. Girls are missing out to studies because they have to go and find fuel wood. There has been a case of sexual harassment for women when they are in the forest finding for fuel wood. We've been doing several researches in clean cooking energies and one of them we've been doing a biomass briquettes. So Rachel is one of the leading parts in this with Akunda. They're helping us to reach the goal, making sure that the 80% by 3034, they, they reach. We had the idea of finding how come this technology has been in the country for quite some time, but we don't see any adoption. Producers are exhibiting their product, but then after that, it's like nothing goes on. So we are going to do a research, we want to see if we just make a briquette from only rice husk. We want to see the quality, but also we want to blend it with the coconut shell and see uh, the quality of Burma's briquette. Implementing the biomass briquettes production, the main challenge is the inadequate fund. We need the proper machines, but also we need good lab with all the facilities. So we need fund to assist them or to train them. We have to 
Sasa katika changamoto hiyo tushukuru sana ukapatikana ujio wa Tiri kuna dada la Eri na kundi lake mwaka 2022 watembelea mara ya kwanza wakatupeleka Tiri Dokure wakaenda katupatia elimu ya utengenezaji mkao ulio bora tukapata maarifa hasa sasa hivyo sasa hivi mkao unaweza kwenda kwenye soko kukamilua bila matumizi The progress is good because they are briquet now is having a good quality and now they have many customers people now are enjoying their briquets when they use it tomorrow they will just come and buy it again Today, I came here to disseminate the knowledge, to tell them about the new formula we have, we have made. And also, I came with the handbook, which shows all the steps of making Baumas briquettes, from collecting the material, cleaning them, to, to packaging. Tunafulai sa hivi, tunabuongea kwa mwezi, tunaweza kutengeza kati ya kilo elfu kumi, mpaka kilo kumi na mbili elfu, na tukazipereka sa kwanezi kaisho. Biomass briquette is cheap comparing to the wood charcoal because one kg of biomass briquettes goes to 500 Tanzanian shillings to 800 Tanzanian shillings. But in urban area, the one kg of wood charcoal goes to 1,000 Tanzanian shillings. Biomass briquettes cook for a long time. So you can cook your beans, you can cook your rice with the same charcoal. We are saving trees, protecting our environment, we are mitigating the, the climate change. Maisha yangu yalikuwa sio mazuri. Ndio nikajiunga na hichi kikundi, nikaona sasa hivi maisha yangu ni mazuri. Sio sawa sawa na mwana. Changamoto zangu nilikuwa kuna pitia mikosefu ya ajira. Kwa hiyo nikaamua kujiunga na hichi kikundi kwa sababu ni mpate ajira, nijiongezee kipato na naweza kujikimu mwenyewe, pia nisiweze kuwa tegemezi. Tulikuwa tunatumia sana kuni ambayo si salama kwa afya zetu. Kwanza unaweza ukapata magonjwa ya kifua, macho na mengine. Lakini siku hizi tunatumia mkaa mbadala ambao mkaa huu ni mzuri kwa afya. Tumeanzisha mfuko wetu mdogo ambao tunatumia kukopeshana kwa kuzunguka. Hivyo wanajijengea kipato kutokana na mikopo wanayopata katika kazi ambayo wamezalisha wao wenyewe. I joined the One Planet Fellowship in 2020. I really wanted to build my capacity to learn more skills on uh, doing research on climate change, but also I wanted a network because as a researcher, you can't work alone. I have a mentee and her name is called Monica. I'm really working with her very close and make sure that what I got from One Planet Fellowship and from my mentor, I also transfer to her. Based on how many students the mentoring experience has been an exciting experience for me. It has been a, an inspiration because I was able to work with a person who is better than me. So from her I was able to like take some skills, research skills, and I was able to apply them during my research activities. <laughs> yes. How comes? Having to see her, I was like, maybe I can be her, I can be like her one day. I want to be a shining example of how science and collaboration can bring positive changes to the household, ensuring that African households have access to clean cooking methods and healthy living practices. <laughs>